Hi, this is a guide to reducing home CO2 levels for those of us who don't have a state-of-the-art HVAC system. Maybe you live in an apartment or maybe you can't afford to spend tens of thousands of dollars on a heating and cooling system that distributes temperature and humidity controlled outdoor air throughout your house. I don't have that. You probably don't either. In this video, I'll present practical CO2 reduction solutions, and I'm gonna help you avoid the mistakes I made when I was new to this. I'll also give you a realistic CO2 concentration to shoot for, and then I'll recommend a good CO2 meter. Welcome to the Healthy Home Guide. This is a place where I share practical tips for creating a safe and healthy home. Whether the word home refers to your house or your body. If you would, please go ahead and like this video and subscribe because it causes the YouTube algorithm to shine its favorable light upon me. All right, let's get into it. So first I'm gonna give you a quick background on CO2. So in terms of how it relates to your home, CO2 is a gas that's produced when you breathe and by some gas powered appliances. Actual research has shown that breathing air with high CO2 concentrations can negatively impact one's health. But what concentration of CO2 is too high? Well, it depends who you ask. Studies report unhealthy effects anywhere from above 600 parts per million to above 15,000 parts per million. It depends what health effect you're actually investigating. It also depends who you're investigating, meaning a person with chronic illness or without. To make it even more complicated, it depends what period of time you're investigating. Meaning, are you investigating 30 minute concentration exposures or a month? So how do we even know what threshold to use for our homes? Well, according to leaders in the field of home health, such as Corbett Lunsford of the channel Home Performance, I love that channel, Spikes in your home CO2 levels should not exceed 1,000 parts per million. But why 1,000 parts per million? Well, the answer to that question will become clear by the end of this video, I promise. So how do you go about keeping your home CO2 levels below 1,000 parts per million? Well, here's a hint. CO2 levels outdoors are generally lower than they are indoors. So because of that, you can lower your home CO2 levels by bringing outdoor air inside and bringing outdoor air inside is known as ventilation. Ventilating can lead to unhealthy conditions in your home if not done properly. The number one mistake people make when trying to lower CO2 levels is bringing in outdoor air that is too humid, too full of harmful particles or gases, or too hot or cold. I suppose that's more than one mistake, but yeah. I made the mistake of ventilating without dehumidifying during a period of the summer when it was very rainy and so humid. During that time, I couldn't stop sneezing like all day and my sinuses were constantly itchy and my skin was so itchy all over my body. I had terrible eczema. I was physically uncomfortable almost every second of the day. Eventually, I discovered that black mold had grown all around my sink, on my dish rack, and more places. All the humid air I was bringing into the house created the perfect conditions for mold to proliferate like crazy. Ventilating can also be harmful on days with poor air quality, such as from wildfires or high ozone levels. My neighbor also sometimes uses a meat smoker, and ventilating during those times is not only extremely unhealthy, it also sets off my smoke alarm. Another potential ventilation issue is of course when it's too hot or cold outside. Of course, that can change the temperature of your house too much, decreasing comfort, taxing your HVAC system, and increasing your utility costs. So how do you avoid these potential pitfalls? Tip number one. Now this is my favorite tip. Instead of ventilating, and if you've forgotten, that means instead of bringing outdoor air in your house, keep the doors to the rooms of your house cracked or better yet, wide open. For example, if you're in your office, keep your office door open. CO2 concentrations will build far less quickly than if you stayed in your office with the door closed. Tip number two, I really like this one. Circulate the air inside of your home with fans. This will prevent clouds of CO2 from accumulating around you. So I have a fan outside of my office blowing air from the rest of my house into my office. Um, so notice that these first two tips didn't even involve ventilating. Three, 
Use the dehumidifier, so when it's humid outside, you can still ventilate a little. I really like Santa Fe dehumidifiers because they take MERV 13 filters, which prevent mold from colonizing the dehumidifier. And they're also designed to cover large spaces efficiently. Four, when outdoor air quality is poor, you can use one of my filtered fresh air intake devices, which cleans the air before it comes inside. Here's a video in which I teach you step-by-step step how to build a filtered fresh air intake. Also, to see what the outdoor air quality currently is, use the Breezometer site. Five, when it's too hot or cold outside, use an HRV or ERV to regulate the temperature of the incoming fresh air. Here's a video I made about an HRV I built myself for really cheap. It's perfect for winter ventilation. So, how do you actually measure CO2 concentrations in your home? Well, I and numerous experts in this field use the Aronet 4. So in its display, it uses e-ink like Kindles, which makes it extremely energy efficient. So depending on how you configure it, it can last up to four years without needing a battery replacement. This video is not sponsored by the makers of this, by the way. I wish it were, I'm getting nothing for this. Anyway, the Aronet 4 costs 250 bucks, which is very reasonable considering that it's really accurate. I'm sorry to say, but if you spend any less than 250, you will likely be sacrificing accuracy in a major way. So here's how to actually use the Aronet 4. So here is the CO2 concentration in PPM. And this is the number you wanna keep below 1,000. But why 1,000? Well, it balances health with practicality. To be more specific, it minimizes the symptoms of excessive CO2 exposure while also being easily attainable. You don't have to bring in massive amounts of outdoor air to make sure your home CO2 concentrations stay below 1000 ppm. Anyway, so back to the Aronet 4. So this is the temperature right here and this is the relative humidity. So keep the humidity in your house below around 55%. So it's really simple. Just make sure CO2 doesn't peak above 1000 ppm and humidity doesn't peak above 55%. Okay, so keep in mind that these are realistic practical thresholds or upper limits, not optimal average levels. I shoot for an average CO2 concentration of closer to 600 ppm. As far as humidity goes, keeping it at 35% arrests mold growth. I will say though that 35% isn't always attainable for me in the summer. So on the whole, I just try to stay below the 55% threshold. So how do you actually use the Aronet 4? Well, initially, keep it in the same room as you, like when you're working, when you're sleeping, exercising, just to develop an intuitive sense of how CO2 levels fluctuate in your home. Once you have that intuitive sense, where you keep it is up to you. Okay, so this is important. Do not make this mistake. Don't keep the Aronet 4 too close to your body because then you'll be breathing on it and your breath contains a high concentration of CO2 and that's gonna skew the readings. You can keep it at least around six feet away from you. I hope I earned your subscription by teaching you how to monitor and lower your CO2 levels safely. So I'm wondering what happened in your life that made you interested in lowering CO2 levels in your home? And be honest, respond down below in the comments. I'd really appreciate that. Uh, also, let me know if you have any questions. If you found this helpful, please like this video and subscribe. Anyway, thanks for watching.